this is a uh, slide three of our 70s unit and the third of our uh, causes or uh, groups here, specific groups, uh, looking at minority uh, issues and three main groups of minorities that uh, we need to talk about here. Uh, the first one being Mexican Americans or Chicanos. Um, as the, the 40s went on after the war, um, more and more Mexicans moved into the southwestern United States. Um, in 1965, uh, a man named Cesar Chavez uh, led a strike on behalf of migrant farm workers in California. Uh, most Chicanos um, if they are involved in agriculture, are migrant workers. They move from farm to farm um, looking for work. They're not the farm owners. So Chavez will um, lead a strike on behalf of these migrant farm workers. He used the nonviolent tactics of Dr. King. To organize the strikes that he would lead, he formed a union known as the United Farm Workers. Um, it is still around today, still a very powerful union today. Um, and he will organize several boycotts of particular crops uh, in the country, forcing farmers to uh, recognize the union and negotiate with them. Now again, he uses the, the peaceful, nonviolent tactics of Dr. King, and as with the same thing that happens during... Um, the civil rights movement, a lot of Chicanos are not going to be patient enough. They're not going to wait for the changes. They want more changes more quickly. So they will turn to a much more militant form of protesting, and they will call themselves the Brown Berets. Um, these are Chicanos who uh, don't want to wait on peaceful, nonviolent protesting to work, and they will use much more militant uh, form of protesting, much like uh, the Black Panthers did uh, with African Americans looking for support among uh, the streets of black America, urban America, the cities, the Brown Berets will do the same thing. They will look to gain power in Chicano neighborhoods, um, and they will constantly be doing uh, battle with the Immigration and Naturalization Service uh, chanting brown power, brown power, as opposed to the black power movement that was going on at the same time. Okay. Now, the second uh, group here that we need to talk about are the Native Americans. Uh, yes, we're still trying to get them some rights here. Uh, we've been talking about this since back in September. Um, the Native Americans would launch a red power movement. So you got the black power movement among African Americans, you got the brown power movement among Chicanos. They're going to launch what they call their red power uh, movement. And they would form an organization to, to kind of get everybody working on the same page here called AIM. A I M. Uh, it will stand for the American Indian Movement. The American Indian Movement. Okay. Uh, and they're working to, to improve conditions on the reservations, to get Indians out of poverty, uh, to get them jobs, okay? and to gain attention for their cause, AIM will resort to a couple of extreme stunts. Um, in 1969, uh, AIM will take control of Alcatraz Island. Um, it had stopped being used as a prison, and... When the Bureau of Indian Affairs building burned down in San Francisco, Native Americans said, hey, how about we, uh, you give us Alcatraz Island to use as the new Bureau of Indian Affairs uh, building. Uh, the federal government said, nope, we'd really like to turn that into a national park. So, no, good luck. You're going to have to find another building. Um, angered, the uh, members of AIM will take over Alcatraz. They will capture the island and actually held it for 18 months. Um, a lot of uh, entertainers, writers, musicians, uh, movie stars, and so forth would donate a lot of money to the cause of AIM here uh, and would help uh, pay for uh, resupply efforts um, uh, to Alcatraz Island. 
So 18 months they hold it. Um, in 1973, moving ahead here, Native Americans um, seized Wounded Knee, South Dakota. They take over a whole town, uh, running people out. Um, and they will capture and hold this town for 71 days. Um, now, the site is significant because if you will think back, um, they don't just, you know, take over any old town. Uh, they take over Wounded Knee because Wounded Knee was the site of the final battle of the Indian Wars. Uh, it's where the federal government once and for all put down the Native Americans uh, and AIM sees themselves as uh, rising again here at Wounded Knee. Here you see the logo there. They actually have a very cool little logo, the, the peace sign of the, you know, the, the fingers and the hand forming the head of the Indian with the feathers and all that. But anyway, the American Indian Movement, Remember Wounded Knee, 1890 to 1973. Okay. All right, our last group here uh, is the homosexual movement. Uh, the 1960s would see the, really the beginnings of the gay rights movement. Um, tensions hit a boiling point in 1969 when police raided a homosexual restaurant in New York City known as the Stonewall Inn. Um, this had happened before. Cities had laws, states had laws uh, making homosexuality a crime. Uh, homosexual, uh, homosexuals sorry, had, uh, had to live, you know, hidden in the closet, as it were, uh, the saying goes. Uh, but they had to hide their true identity from um, the general community and society at large because it was illegal. Um, and police had often raided restaurants or bars that had been known to support um, gay rights. But this time they fought back. Uh, there was a huge riot. There you see uh, pictures uh, here at the bottom. Stop attacks on lesbians and gays and the police force uh, beating people as they come out of the restaurant. Uh, homosexuals fought back. It comes to, comes to be known as the Stonewall Riot. Right? Um, on the one-year anniversary of uh, the Stonewall Riot, the first gay rights parade was held in New York City. Uh, so, in 1970, um, the first gay rights parade is held, and to this day, on the anniversary of the Stonewall Riot, gay rights parades are held across the country, uh, as homosexuals now uh, make up one of the more powerful of uh, minority groups.